Welcome to a short video on Oracle Sun coding conventions from Elon University by Joel and myself, Dave. And the whole goal of coding conventions, and these haven't changed since 1999, is to have all of us develop code so that it will look like it was written by one person. If we do this, the code will be easier to develop in groups of teams to enhance or to maintain. I listed two references here. The second reference is the classic code conventions for the Java programming language. It's available online. You can search Google, get it in HTML or PDF format. The first reference is harder to come by. You might want to check your local library. Kathy Sierra and Bert Bates write some very readable articles. I'm only going to talk about coding conventions. I'm not going to get it all into Eclipse preferences, what the code looks like in a Java project, nor am I going to talk about documentation conventions for Javadoc or how it's generated in the Eclipse IDE. Well, why coding conventions? You know, in school, typically we develop a homework assignment, hand it in, and that's the end of it. This is not the case in industry. In fact, as it says here, 80% of the lifetime cost of a piece of software goes, goes into maintenance of that software. Um, most likely, you will develop or work on some software and then move on to another company, move on to another project. You won't sit there and babysit and maintain and extend the code that you wrote for the rest of your life. By following the same conventions, this code can be maintained by other people, uh, both on-site or, or perhaps uh, in different geographical locations. Since the code's all developed with the same conventions, it'll be easy for all of us to pick up and extend. And of course, if the software itself is part of a product, we want to have this to be professional. We want it packaged, formatted, uh, in, in a quality fashion. Now, I can guarantee you as students that if you follow these conventions, that when you go out to an internship or work on a project at a company, that you will fit right in. When we create a Java class, the source code for the Java class is going to go into a file with the class name dot and the suffix Java. When that code gets compiled, it's going to go into the same file prefix, if you will, of the class name. It's going to be followed with the dot class. This next slide will make it clearer. For example, if I create a class Dave, the source code will go into a file called dave.java. Notice the prefix on the file name is the same as the name of the class. Now each Java source file is going to contain only a single public class or interface. So dave.java is only going to have one public class, that being Dave. Now you can put other private classes in the file Dave, and that's okay. Now within the file, there's going to be a certain ordering we're going to enforce. We're going to start off with comments. We're going to follow it by a package, followed by import statements, and then the class declaration itself. I said we're going to start off with comments. This is critical. And we want to start off every file with a copyright notice. It's going to have the file name, the version, and the date that the file was created. On the next line, we're going to see a copyright statement. If you copyright the year, say 2012, and it's going to have the name of yourself or the name of your company. The copyright is critical for ownership purposes. This copyright says all the work is completely your own, no one else's. Now, these copyright statements are pretty much boilerplate, and when we get to Eclipse, we'll see that Eclipse can automatically generate this for us. So after we have the copyright statement, we're going to have package statement. Now, typically in your Java 1 class, you may or may not have used packages, but packages are really the professional way to go so that we can, as developers, use the same class name, but be able to distinguish it by its namespace or its package. It's a more complete address. So every class that we create 
at least at Elon, is going to be inside of a package. And typically we'll use the reverse of our, our internet address. So we're at elon.edu. We'll switch that around and the package will be edu.elon. Or for IBM, it would be com.ibm. Or for Google, com.google. This allows a class Dave that lives in the package edu.elon to be easily distinguishable from the class Dave developed at Google that's in the package com.google.dave. Now, when we refer to classes, class names within our code, the way these classes get resolved is through a series of import statements. So after we have our copyright, our package, our import statements, we're going to have our class, a class declaration. The class is going to be followed by its static variables, listed in public, protected, and private order, followed by its instance variables, again in public, protected, and private order, followed by constructors, and then followed by methods. Now, when we write our source code, we are going to be indenting. We are going to be nesting code, depending on what level that code is at. We are going to use four spaces for our level of indentation. Now, we're not going to use tabs. We're going to use spaces. That way, when we import this code on different devices, it will always look the same. The maximum line length for a line of code is going to be 80 characters. If it's over 80, we're going to wrap it based on some policies that you'll see shortly. Well, what are those policies? Typically, we're going to try to break after a comma or break before an operator. Down below here, I show you an example of a long line of code that goes over 80 characters. We chose here to break before an operator. This had the advantage of us not breaking within parentheses expressions. The second statement, we're breaking after a comma. Now when we break and go to the next line, typically you'll have eight spaces of indentation on the next line. When we declare our variables, Yes, you can declare multiple variables per line, but that's not preferred. We're going to prefer a separate declaration for each variable, one per line. When we initialize our local variables, we're going to do it at the time of declaration. So here I declared the variable number of students of type int, and it's going to have an initial value of zero. Placement. Where should we place the, the variables? We're going to say that we'd like to place all the definitions or declarations of our variables at the top of the compound block that they are used within. So here I got a variable called int1. I declare it at the top of the my method block. Class and interface declarations. When we declare a class or an interface, we're going to follow the declaration with an open brace right at the end of the compound statement. And the closing brace for the class is going to be on a separate line by itself aligned with the beginning of the compound statement. Now all compound statements are going to be using braces. The opening brace is always going to be at the end of the line that the compound statement began on. And then we're going to put the closing brace on a line by itself to align itself with the beginning of the compound statement. We're going to use braces for all of our control structures, all of our looping structures. And we'll see some examples coming up. Now here's an if statement. If it's a compound statement, going to put the opening brace at the end of this compound declaration. All the statements that it holds are going to go indented, and then it's going to close with the brace aligned with the beginning of the compound declaration. We could have an if-else statement. Same way, the if condition followed by a brace 
all the statements that go with the if condition. Brace on a separate line. But notice how that brace is followed by the else part of the compound statement. Again, an opening brace on the same line, followed by all of its statements. We want to use braces for all compound statements. It makes our code easier to extend and maintain. Here's a looping structure. We declare the while condition. The opening brace goes on the same line as the compound declaration. All the statements that go along with the while condition, no matter if it's just one or more, they go within the braces and we have a closing brace. Here's a switch statement. We're going to test the switch condition. Notice how the cases are aligned in the same column as the switch statement. And under each case is going to be listed all the statements that go along with that case. Now typically a case statement ends with a break, like case DEF. It's got a bunch of statements ending by a break, which means go to the end of the switch block. It could be, it could be the case that somebody forgot to put a break statement in. To signify to other developers that we intentionally did not put a break statement in, we should put a comment something like falls through. We're also going to require for all switch statements that there be a default condition. Blank lines. Blank lines can really help readability. We want to put a blank line between methods and constructors after the last instance variable in our class declaration. Inside our methods between the local variables in, the first, in our first statements we can put it between logical segments of code within a method, and we definitely want to put one before each comment. Blank spaces. We want to put blank spaces after a keyword in a parenthesis. This helps us distinguish a keyword from, say, a method call followed by its arguments. We want to put a blank space after commas and argument list, and we want to put a Blank space between binary operators. Notice around the equal sign, around the plus sign, etc. We also want to put blank spaces in four statements after each semicolon. Naming conventions. Classes are going to be nouns. The first letter of each word will be a capital letter. There will be no underscores or spaces between words. Rather, they will all be concatenated together. So here I have image sprite. Notice the first letter of each word is capitalized. Interfaces will be named just like classes. Methods are going to have the first letter capitalized of each word with the exception of the first word. So notice it's run fast with R being lowercase. Variable names are going to be named the same as methods. We're going to encourage meaningful method names. You should stay away from one letter, one letter variables unless you're using them for temporary variables or class, classic variables used in a for loop or perhaps for an exception, exception E. Constants are going to be a little bit different now. Constants are going to be all caps and there's going to be an underscore separated between words. Well, that's the end of the coding conventions. Not difficult. Something to keep in mind and make a habit. Have a nice day.